right, we are live yes. for another exciting, exciting episode. episode of As the River Turns. Lisa, yes. we've been doing this for a year and a half now. Yes. It's hard to believe when you think about it. It is. A year and a half. And remember, initially we were every day. Yeah, that only lasted about Ooh, a week and a half. It did. <laughs> And then we couldn't, the residents couldn't stand it. And we, and we couldn't, couldn't stand, stand it either. either so. <laughs> Went um, both ways. You know, right now, I think uh, the, um, the every week is probably about right. Yeah. You know, but we're, we'll talk about this, but we're starting to see mm -hmm. the percentage starting to drop down here. So I'm kind of hoping that um, we, uh, we might be able to even go to once every other week. Right, here a little right. Bit. And that's so what we're planning for October. I think we are planning so, for October. Yep. So, yeah, go down a little bit, but. Well, welcome to our yeah. hundred and thirtiest. <laughs> We're guessing. We don't know how many. I've stopped it is. counting. It could be after we hit the hundred. I stopped counting. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's probably not worth really keeping track at this it's point. It's probably not. Just um, you know, I think um, what's on, I think YouTube is starting to charge us a fee for all the shows that we have on there now, right? Oh, I think so. I'm kidding, we, they're not. But, uh, we have quite a following, though. We, we do. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, very exciting. When you go back and look at some of those old YouTube ones, Ooh. there there's at least 10 or 12 people that have seen it. I mean, it's amazing how many people have actually have looked into <laughs> YouTube. And kind of well, it's probably because they've gone on Care Merge and watched them. That's well, why. So. And it's just not counting it for us, I I'm guess. sure. Um, what did you think of that photo of the day with the cheerleaders? Yeah. That was fun today. That right? was awesome. Yes. We were a little short on golf carts. We were. <laughs> for the parade. I was a little surprised because I know we like our golf cart parades, but um, we still had a few of them, which was good. And <laughs> it was great to see our healthcare residents out enjoying the beautiful weather. And the cheerleaders went over there and, yeah. and did yeah. some routine for them. And it was, it was great to see that. So. Well, it was also cool to see Josh, who is yes. one of the Scooters guys, yes. who's very talented when it comes to the yep. drums. That was awesome. It was awesome to have him out there, and you know, he just, um, you know, I, we ought to probably try and find that video sometime and play that um, on one of our shows, or maybe mm -hmm. even have Josh on one of our shows. But mm -hmm. um, there was a time before COVID when Josh would be out on Battleground yeah. Avenue at certain times. Just on the just on the street on Battleground, and he'd be playing his drums, and yep. people would stop and park and come mm -hmm. listen to him for a while. Mm -hmm. And I think he just brought a lot of cheer yeah. to people as they and were. He made the news by. for that. So yeah, he, yeah. he was on yep. the news for that. That's yep. right. That was so, pretty cool. Yeah, he's he's a great guy. So yep. Josh, thank you for doing that. That was pretty neat. <laughs> yep. Well, we have a trivia question today. We do, and this one is also from Dick Witt, and he's back from vacation, and this is his favorite question. This okay. is his favorite question? This is his favorite question. He gave oh. me several, but this is his favorite. Well, we need to tell him what the phone number is first before yes. we read the question because... It's a temporary number today because you all are too used to the other number. We had to spice it up just for today. It's just a temporary number for today. Okay. So you're going to call Michelle at 336-209-3504. I'll repeat it again. Please, yes. Because people probably had to go get a pen or paper. Yes. Right? Three, three, six. Two, zero, nine. Three, five, zero, four. And this question is so easy that we're going to take the fourth caller today. <laughs> you like to live dangerously, don't you? I'm just trying to make Michelle's day. <laughs> Well, that's true. That's true. The fourth caller. And that's because we had four golf carts this morning, so I just think four is our magic number today. So. Four. Four. And the prize today is this wonderful bottle of wine. It is a dry 2017 Riesling. Oh, very oh, nice. oh, somebody in the audience just said, oh my gosh, that's my wine. Oh, Riesling, yeah. Riesling. Well, what if they get the answer right? Well, they have to be the fourth person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me give you the number one more time just in case you had to yes, get your pen yes, and paper. Yes. Okay? 336 yes. 209 3504. Okay. Here's the question. The question is Who is the leader of the club that makes, that's that made. made for you and me? Who is the leader of the club that's made for you and me? 
Uh, all right, so. <laughs> okay. If nobody, any, nobody can write down that phone If anybody number, needs you, that number, it's 336-209-3504. Who is the leader of the club that's made for you and me? If I have to, I can sing it for you. Okay, so while she's doing that, that's good. We'll keep her busy for okay. a little bit while she's waiting to get four phone calls in. Yes. So uh, let's do some of the update for um, the coronavirus. Okay. So um, I, I, I really think that um, we're seeing a real good trend toward downward. You know, we've been seeing this for the last several weeks now. Um, I was telling Lisa, I was looking at... Um, the cases, the positive cases, a graph that they have that you that comes up with from the New York Times every time that you do it, and I was seeing how that graph went in. Really, I guess it was in November it started, and then all the way through until March, and it was you know you saw the mountain and it was kind of a gradual climb up the mountain and peaked in early January and then started back down the mountain and came down in March. Well. Seeing the same thing happening with the with the um, the Delta variant, mm -hmm. um, little different though in that it, the, the the original COVID virus was a kind of a gradual climb. This one is like, whew, I mean, it was a straight climb up, and I'm hoping that we're going to have just as much of a quick decline sure. coming the other way. And you know, you really are seeing it. I mean, we really are have we have really crested over the peak now, and we seem to be kind of coming down the other way. So. Uh, I was really pleased. Most of the statistics show that. Um, you know, our daily rate in for North Carolina was 9.7 percent today, and um, last just as a, a reference, last couple weeks was 11 percent last week, 11.9 the week before. So, we're starting to see that mm -hmm. percentage drop mm -hmm. even for the state of North Carolina. You know, here in Guilford County, you know, we got as high as 10.9 percent, um, and now we have dropped to eight and a half percent. So we're starting to really see that percentage come back down again, which I'm really, I think we're all very happy about. Um, you know, the 14 day average per 100,000 is coming down, uh, except for Guilford for some reason this week. Um, Guilford went up a little bit, all the other counties came down. Um, but, uh, and that might, you know, who knows, that might have something to do with the Labor Day uh, situation as well. But. Um, you know, our, um, the percentages are going down. Um, the hospitalizations have gone down. We went from uh, two weeks ago, we were had 3,630 uh, people in the hospital. Last week was 3,464. And this week it's 3,010. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a big decrease. Mm -hmm. uh, the unfortunate side is we have seen an increase in the number of deaths from last week to this mm -hmm. week. It was 633 deaths this week in North Carolina. Uh, 406 the week before, 611 two weeks ago. So, and we know that unfortunately the deaths are like one of the last things to kind of, you know, progress down as far as percentage-wise. So, uh, but hopefully uh, we're going to we're 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 getting past that and moving along. And so, you know, I, I'm kind of getting breathing a little easier. Our community itself, you know, we let I me mean, knock wood here. We haven't had a positive case in well over three weeks now. Mm -hmm. um, so really happy about that, or at least one that we know of. Right. Um, you know, we're down to where we're just testing uh, unvaccinated staff twice a week now as per requirements uh, through uh, the federal requirements. Um, you know, there's been some interesting things um, coming out about the efficacy of the, um, the vaccines. You know, I think we all are very fortunate. Those that got their vaccine here got the Moderna. Um, if you're doing any kind of reading at all in the uh, in COVID update stuff, you're seeing that the Moderna still is, you know, having better success than the Pfizer is. Not to say that the Pfizer isn't doing well, but the Moderna is, you know, we're still seeing really high efficacy from the Moderna vaccine, which is great. Um, you know, unfortunately, I'm still hearing that the people in the hospital, it's still 93, 94, 96% are unvaccinated people that are in the hospital, and that's what we see. And to me, that's that's the kind of the telling statistic. Um, I know people might argue that, but um, um, that's a telling statistic to me. But, um, 
you know, we're, we're um, you know, I think we're starting to really see it kind of start coming down, and I'm really happy about that. Um, um, we, um, you know, as far as the Moderna vaccine goes, um, you all probably have been wondering about how we're doing with the booster clinic that we're talking about doing. And, and quite honestly, we really are on hold with the booster clinic. We got some good news, and then some news that was, uh, the good news is that the federal government has said that, um, that they are going to support the booster shot like they did with the original vaccines, um, with the, the original shots. So that means, it sounds like that means to us that they're going to go ahead and bring CVS and Walgreens in to be able to do the shots again for the nursing homes and retirement communities. And so if that's the case, we can get CVS to come back out and do our clinic at some point and we'll be good to go. Um, the, the flip side of that though is we got the Moderna vaccine and um, you know Pfizer came out and said, and you know the, uh, uh, the FDA approved Pfizer for the third shot, pretty much for general use. And there hasn't been as much information coming out about the Moderna. And, you know, some people are taking that as a negative. Actually, it's not a negative. It's a positive. It's a Moderna, the Moderna is better, has been, had a better shelf life, I guess is the best way to say that, than the Pfizer has. And so um, there hasn't been any um, comments yet that I've seen that have specifically said, you know, that we need to go ahead and start getting people on to the boosters at this point, other than the immunocompromised, mm -hmm. which we know about. So, right. so I think we're just kind of in a waiting pattern at this point to wait to see what happens with uh, Moderna and the recommendations that come out from that and what the FDA approves from that as well. And, you know, we'll go from there. Uh, but um, if we can get CVS to come out and do our, our clinic again for us, our, our booster clinic, that went great yeah. last time, yeah, so we'll do did. that as well. And we said this last week, Lisa, but if, first of all, if you are a resident or staff member here and you had Pfizer and you've had it uh, more than six months ago, um, then you might want to mm -hmm. you might want to call and see if you can get the Pfizer from yeah. any of the local CVS's, Walgreens, and you won't be able to get it here, but right. you can get it um, from one of those kind of places. And we would recommend you do that. Now, or if you're immunocompromised here and you have the Moderna, you can ask your doctor mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. might be able to authorize you getting another right. Moderna shot. But, you know, we're, like I said, for most of us, we're just kind of in a waiting pattern right. anyway here. So. And they are saying not to mix the vaccines, right? Thank you. That is correct. Yeah, yeah that's the latest I've heard is that if you right. started with Pfizer, you stay with Pfizer. If you started with the Johnson & Johnson, you stay with Johnson & Johnson. And I had always thought here that we would want to stay with the Moderna. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so far, mm -hmm. you know, this, this could change, but it's proving out that we, I think we got we got the right mm -hmm. vaccine here, the Moderna, mm -hmm. I think has been good. So, so we'll see what happens with that. Right. And we'll keep you all up to date, but at this point we don't have a clinic set. It's not gonna happen in mid-October. Um, I'm hearing that Moderna may not even come out until the end of October with a recommendation about their, about their third shots. So we, um, we might be November or December before we really know what's going on with the Moderna booster shots. Mm -hmm. um, who knows? They may come out and say that we don't even need booster shots. I, I, I just don't know at this right. point. So right. we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, Tom, we are being asked, what is the river landing yes. vaccine rate? Yes. So we've been working on this, Lisa. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we have gotten a list um, from our corporate folks. Um, and we've been looking at our list of our staff members and mm -hmm. kind of really scrubbing that list is right. how it's right. we've been kind of putting it, which mm -hmm. means just really looking at it. And um, we've been able to make some really good inroads, I think. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our staff members um, who maybe were waiting for FDA approval or were mm -hmm. waiting for, you know, just to have more information. You know, we're right. coming up on a year now that right. the first vaccines were given. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we're seeing a lot more staff members that are um, getting it. And I think a lot of them s know that the handwriting is a little bit on the wall here because of President Biden's right. uh, mandate that he said that we're still waiting for information on, which we don't think we're going to get that information now until mid-October at this point. So, but a lot of our staff members have not waiting for that. A lot of them are going ahead and getting the vaccine, which is great. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that they're doing it, obviously. Um, so do you want to tell them what our percentage is for our staff at the it's moment? It's very exciting. Yeah. 
So we are at 81% vaccinated, yeah. so, which is incredible. Yeah, it's, that's so, phenomenal. Yeah, that really is. It's, yep, yep. Our employees are really stepping up and yeah, getting their shots. It's starting and, to yep, get there. It is. And it so is. we're very happy about that. Yep. So, and all folks that we're bringing in new as well, that's that's part of employment here now. Yeah, so we, we probably need to share that, that we have gone ahead to make the decision that um, we are telling new staff members when they come in that the requirement here is that they have to be vaccinated or they have to get vaccinated within 45 mm -hmm. days. And yep. so, um, so we've started that process. We weren't the only ones that did that uh, corporately. We've got, I think Glen Eyre has joined us mm -hmm. in that. Um, and so um, we're moving in that direction. So we're, we're getting there. Right. Yep. It's, it's getting it's there. It's good. But 81% is fantastic. That's great. Yep. Um, you know, that's, you know, when you start adding 81% staff and 98% and of our residents vaccinated, you know, we're, we're now up over 90% as a community. Right. I mean, that's fantastic, yep. Yep. right? Absolutely. I mean, we've got our own little bubble here, which we is do. really good. We do. So, yep. So we'll keep moving in that direction. It's, it's, um, it's very good. I don't know if there's anything else about... I don't know that there is anything else it. related to the virus. Um, we do have construction updates. Yeah, we do. So, um, and maybe good news, I hope, I think it is. So, um, we have found a way around our window dilemma for the uh, balcony extensions that we're doing. Um, and so, balcony upgrades, I should say, they're not really extensions, but the balcony upgrades. So, we're putting in storefront windows instead of working windows. So, we were able to get around then the the issue with getting windows, because we might have been, it might have been December before we got done sure. or if we waited for the other windows. So the window frames are actually already in production. And so we expect that um, we may be pretty close to being back on track for maybe mid-November. Sure. Uh, but I, I want to caution everybody. You know, one of the things that is really one of the main reasons we were doing the balcony upgrades was to solve our water leak issue. And so um, we had some rain a couple of weeks ago. We didn't have any rain, any water down here, which was great, but we're still getting water on the balconies. Mm -hmm. And so we still got some issues that we've got to solve there. And, you know, just making sure before we go too far with this project mm -hmm. that we've got our water issues taken care right. of may delay us at this point. We are not going to build um, closed space knowing that we still got an issue with, um, with water. So um, I think we've made um, some real progress with that. Um, and thank goodness, I'm sure everybody would agree with me, isn't it nice that we don't have all that jackhammering going on anymore? Yes. <laughs> um, uh, it's nice to go down the hallway and not see the residents going like this as you go down the hallway. So true. It's, it's been really good. Um, so we're making good progress there. Good. So, you know, it could be as early as mid-November, um, but you know what? We'll just have to, we're going to play that one by ear. Um, Scooter's building's got electricity in it today. Um, the door, the overhead door that he's um, supposed to be getting um, won't come until mid-October, but they think that they're going to be wrapped up with that one by the end of October. Parking lot, um, I think we're waiting for the last permit now, I mean for the last um, person to come out and expect, inspect to give us our final go ahead. So we're close there as well. Glen Eagles. Mm -hmm. We're going great. The signage went up this week, which was good. Um, all the floors have furniture except for fourth floor and that comes next week. So that's exciting. Um, there has been some delay in the, the corridor overhead lighting. Um, so you'll see that changed out over the next four to six weeks. Um, so that one was a little bit delayed. Um, let's see. And then outdoor furniture, we are recovering the outdoor furniture, but that's also been on back order. So hopefully we'll have it by next spring. <laughs> I'm not even going to put a date to it because we've just been told it's on back order. So you'd never know what that means. So I don't want to promise anything. Um, the awning also that is in front of Glen Eagles, that is um, in the works of, of getting um, a logo on it and getting it installed on the frame. So we're hoping to have that back in the next few weeks. So moving right along. Yeah, it's so going well. So we're getting there. Yeah. It's going well. 
and puzzle tables. There's also a back order on puzzle tables. Yeah. I, so we have that coming at Glen Eagles as well. It's, it's very hit and miss, you all. Yeah. If you all don't know this or not, it's very hit and miss at this point about yeah. what things are being able to be, uh, what we can get access to and what yeah. things we're not. Exactly. You know, I've, I've heard this from several people. I have not confirmed this on my own. Maybe, maybe you all have heard this, that that there are a lot of cargo ships that are out in the water right now and they can't get in and because there's not enough people to be able to take and take the stuff off the cargo ships. And so, uh, you know, we keep here. I've just heard recently that we might be starting to have another issue again with paper products. Paper products, yeah. So, you know, that's not good, right? So I don't know if that's the case or not, but you said you went into yeah. um, Costco, Cos right? Costco's already limiting, and I will guess Sam's will get on board with yeah. that soon too. And but just I, starting to see that. So, so you know, for, for those of us that didn't go out and try and, and hoard all of these things when it was finally came into stock and have, you know, five or six huge <laughs> packages of toilet paper, you know, well, for those of us that don't, toilet there might be a person important. that we can go to if we actually get into real <laughs> trouble that might have these things. So I can bring a roll in for you if you need it. Yeah, so. so we might have to start giving away toilet paper again. Again, we did that. I mean, does it not feel like we've gone full circle yes. here at this point? I mean, I hope not. I hope I that hope doesn't not exist. either. But I am hearing that things are getting, some things are getting tough to get again. Like, somebody told me that meat was a little bit harder to get again. It's more expensive, so, for sure. So, I don't Oof. know. I just don't know. I just, you know, you, you can't guess this stuff. Um, I was at the and, grocery store last night. Yeah. And just regular hamburger, yeah. five twenty nine a pound. Are you kidding me? And I'm like... Wow. That's some good hamburger, apparently. <laughs> I mean, I, I just I just can't pay that. Yeah. That just it blows my mind that hamburger would be five over five dollars a pound. Yeah. I just can't do it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm just you know, gonna have seen, to wait. <laughs> we've seen things like this, right? I mean, you remember when it wasn't that long ago that lumber was like went through yes. the roof, right? Yes. And now there's not the lumber shortage anymore and the lumber's come back down again yeah. in price. I don't yeah. know if it's come down all the way to where it was before, but at right. least it's come pretty right. far down. And so you can get lumber again, you know, right. but you know, it just it, it just cycles. seems to yes. it's just weird yeah. how we keep going through this. I know. Uh, you know, poor Kevin, when he does our upgrades for mm -hmm. our, our, our homes and cottages and apartments when they change over, right? we never know what we're going to be able to get and what we're not going right. to be able to get. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit wise. of a crapshoot mm. there. So yep. um, anyway. <sighs> uh, one so more thing, hope. the carts. Oh, the cart pads. And walking yeah. pads. Yes, yes. Yeah, Scooter was telling us this morning, and I don't know, probably uh, most of the golfers have probably seen it. Um, because I'm guessing that they're riding on it. Well, I know they have because some of the golfers are actually riding on it because mm -hmm. I think we opened up hole three and hole six now with the new car pass. So, uh, but our, our concrete company is doing, is moving along a lot faster than what we thought. You know, at one time we were told it would be about a week for each hole. Well, we're just finishing up. We just started our third week and we're already done Five, I think four so. holes or five holes or yeah. almost five holes. Yep. So we're doing really well. Right. They're going about double the speed than mm -hmm. what we thought they would. So that's good news, obviously, mm -hmm. because one, you know, the sooner we can get all the holes back in that we can start right. using again, the better. But, right. you know, we guess now we've got these great concrete paths oh, for yeah. people to ride Looks on. Great. It's going to be really super. Yep. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really, it's really mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Okay, employee updates. Employee updates. Yes, yes. Yes. So we had another 12 people that we brought into orientation this week for our staff members. Yep. Uh, we had several residents comment. They saw them in the lobby today. Yeah. And they're like, oh, another good group came in. Yeah. So that's exciting. Yeah. Um, so you we know, like to share share good news like yeah, this. Yeah. So we yeah. had about 20 last week and about 12. We so that's 32 new staff members yep. in the last two yep. weeks, which is phenomenal. And a lot have been nursing. A lot have been which nursing. Which is good. Yep. We, um, yeah, so we're, we're starting to fill a few of the mm -hmm. holes that we mm -hmm. have, which is really great. Absolutely. Um, I think we've got another 8 to 10 that are in the pipeline, in the or maybe even yep. a little bit more. Yep. for the next uh, orientation. For the next orientation. Yep. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're healing up a little yeah. bit from a staffing Absolutely. standpoint. We're not quite there yet to where we can open up Wingfoot right. yet. I still think we're still several weeks away from that, but 
you know, it has been our goal that we want to reopen Wingfoot by November 1st. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to do our best to try and get there. Um, but a lot just depends on how well we can staff. Right. There is another, there's a place you all can help us at, and that is, um, we mentioned, I think, last week that we're going to be a little bit um, aggressive on our CNA class. Mm -hmm. And so we have 10 spots for the day class that runs Monday through Thursday for eight weeks. And then we have 10 spots for our new evening class mm -hmm. that we're going to do. And that'll go from 4 o'clock until 9 o'clock every evening, Monday through Thursday. And so we have a good many spots still open for the evening class because we mm -hmm. just added that. Right. But the daytime one is just about that one's filling I think up. we might yep. have one, one or maybe two, two spots mm -hmm. left open on the daytime. But, you know, if you know of anybody that's looking to get their um, certified nursing assistant um, certification, um, this is a great program. Absolutely. Absolutely great program. So please send them our ways. Yep. Um, we'd be happy to talk to somebody any, or anybody that you bring to our, our attention. And I think we mentioned last week we have our talent acquisition person coming yes. in soon, yeah. which is a new position for us. It is, yeah. Um, and her name is Andy, and she'll start on Monday. Andy Womile. Oh. And so um, Andy um, was a great hire for us. Yes. Um, one of the things she specializes in is hiring CNAs. Yes, yes. So that's kind of like, um, woo we mm -hmm. just got a, got a huge boost there, boost there, and she's just well connected with a lot of the, uh, the, the local colleges and high schools that have CNA right. programs, right. and so. Uh, she has all those great contacts. I think she's gonna yeah. come on board and really be a great asset for us, and we'll probably get mm -hmm. a, have an immediate uh, pickup from that, yep. that's what I'm hoping, so. Um, also, one more thing. Um, Back several months ago, I think it was in April, we talked about our employee safety challenge. Yes. So I just want to talk about it again because I have great news. Our teams have gone almost six months without any employee accident, which is incredible. Yeah. It is incredible to be able to say that. Tomorrow will be six months. Yes. We have a, we yes. Have a um, so just wanted to give you all an update on that. And just as a reminder, our teams are broken up into six teams here. Um, and each team has a color with it. And we have a golf theme. So there's safety pros and caddies on each team that head up the safety challenges for us. Yeah. So it's, it's going great. Um, the teams have really bought into it. Yeah. And just the safety awareness, all of that has helped us. And keeping our team members safe is, is good for... Um, our residents, and it's good for River Landing in general. Yeah, so. boy, I tell you, you know, with the insurance the way it is. Absolutely. If we can keep it's our win -win. workers' comp claims down, then we, um, you know, we, we really can save a yep. lot of money on yep. workers' compensation insurance. Yep. And so um, we, we, you know, I don't have a problem saying this. We've incentivized our teams mm -hmm. um, to meet these goals. And so yep. we're hoping, you yep. know, we're... We've been very optimistic about it and, and kind of holding our breath a little bit at the same know. time. But, um, you know, to be able to sit here and say we've gone six months without a reportable right. accident right. is huge for yes, us. Yes, that and is. So, that is. Um, you know, typically we have anywhere from, just to give you some, um, some background, anywhere from usually about eight to, to 20 reportable yep. accidents on a yearly basis. And yep. so the fact that we have had zero right. so far this right. year. Um, Yep. And, and a lot of it is because I think staff members are taking extra precaution. They are. And because there's a contest going right, on. And, right, you know, Well, just the awareness. And the awareness. It has we, made safety more aware like that. And it's, is it's good. good. Yeah. You know, we've been giving out prizes yep. um, on a monthly basis. And um, it's, been, it's, been, it's been really good. I'm yep. really Absolutely. Very pleased. You know, we keep saying, could we, could we, and I don't want to jinx this, but could we ever go a whole year without having a reportable incident? And um, we did this, Lisa, hmm, about 12, 13 years ago, we did something like this where we had kind of this um, little incentivized program. And we, we had a stretch of 261 days mm -hmm. in that year where we had, didn't have a reportable incident. And wow. um, so... So we're, if we get we can get if we get to 200, which will right, be next right. month in the middle of next month, we have a special little thing that we're going to be doing with our staff that'll be fun. Um, mm -hmm. And so you know, and we might the thing that we're making for it we might mm -hmm. use for something the show, else. right? It might be on the show. Yeah, we might so. decide to do something with it on the show. Yeah, yeah. We haven't figured that out exactly right, yet, right. but anyway, we're we're working on that. But 
Yeah, yeah. that was that's good to bring that yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, events. So we have the Olympics today. Of course, we had the golf cart parade, um, and also co puzzle competitions were today. And Friday, we have golf at Pinewood and Wee Bowling here at River Landing. Monday, we have bocce, men's, women's, and co-ed. Tuesday, we have table tennis, swim and water walking events, and water volleyball. Wednesday, we have the walking events and quiz bowl, which will be a Zoom meeting. Um, so if you're here in the multipurpose room, otherwise we will be broadcasting it on 1390, so you can watch it there as well. Um, Thursday, we have duplicate bridge, corn toss, and pickleball. And Friday will be the Olympics award ceremony, which we will also be broadcasting on 1390. So yeah, I have a quick comment to make about that. So I was okay. on my weekly call today with the other executive directors from the communities and um, out of nowhere, um, one of our executive directors, and it wasn't here, uh, one of our executive directors made a comment about the quiz bowl and was asking the other ex executive directors if they were you know, how they were gonna handle losing quiz bowl <laughs> this year because that their community was gonna win the quiz bowl competition this year. Oh boy. And I went, it's already oh started. Oh boy, it's on. It's already it started. It is on. So, <sighs> and I said, well, okay. we'll see. Proof's in the pudding. That's you know, right. We'll That's see right. how that goes. Yep. But I think there's a lot of excitement around yeah. that. You know, it's a shame we can't get together. I know. You know, I as know. a group. Yep. But, you know, yep. there's hope that next year for the Olympics mm -hmm. that we can do that. Because yep. I know how neat that is to be able to yep. go see the other communities and have them come mm -hmm. here and just be able to do some of those events right. live. But at least we get to do something here. That's so right. that's, that's exciting. That's right. Um, and one last announcement. If you live here in the main building or Glen Eagles, um, you all know you have a storage area that you have cages that you can lock up those extra items that don't fit in your apartment. The storage areas have gotten a little out of control. And folks are putting things outside of their cages. So we, we need you all to put things in your cages, the designated areas, because we've actually had several residents bring safety concerns to us that we've gone in to take a look at. So please put all the items in your cages. There will actually be a letter coming out from Cindy that's going to give a certain date. And if the items are not in your cages, we will be removing those items because yeah. it's, it's causing some safety issues right now. Yeah, you, you can't take so, over the areas. No. I'm sorry. And when I the fire department could. comes in, too, yeah, they yeah. actually look at that as well. We can get, so, fined. We can get fined for that. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah, if you have stuff that's not in your cage, you need to find a place for yeah. it somewhere other than there. And yeah. that's don't put it in the stairwells either, please. Don't do that either. No. So, yeah. Remember that one time we found a bike in the stairwell? Several, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we ever figured out whose it was. No, but I rode it all the way home, so I, you know, it was great. So. It's gone. <laughs> oh. Okay, we have a couple questions today. Okay. Uh, first one, I used to enjoy the enlightened classes. Will you start them back again? So that is a great question, and I talked to Brian, and yes, we will be starting those back again. The trouble has been a lot of folks have been working from home and they have not had the same capabilities when they've been in museums and other places to be able to do, do these functions to large groups. So there actually was a hold on a lot of those classes. Um, so they're starting to get back into them again. So hopefully you will see one coming up soon. But I used to like those too. Right, so. yeah. But we're gonna get back into them. Yep, we will. Okay, next question. I know it's early to commit to this, but do you plan on having the car show in May? <laughs> Of next year, <laughs> I think people just want to have something to look forward to. Well, as far as we're <laughs> concerned, yes. I mean, you know, we we didn't plan not to do it this year even, yeah. but um, I, I, you know, that was right after the the percentage went way down. Right. If we had advertised that we were having a car show here, I think we would have yeah, had like five thousand people here because <laughs> everybody had been cooped up for so long at yeah. that point. Yeah. So you know, I, you all know this. It really just depends on what's going on. I mean, I. You know, certainly by May, we should be done with the Delta variant, but, you know, is there another variant coming along that's going to mess that up for us? I don't know. I right. mean, you know, right. if you have a crystal ball and can tell me, then let me know. <laughs> but, you know, absolutely we're going to plan on trying to do the car show. Yeah. I miss the car show. I know. We, we haven't done do. it now for probably been three years yes. since we've done yes. it. So, yep. um, and I know a lot of residents look forward to absolutely. that. And their families. It's, a, yeah. it's become a real it's a family event, event too. Yes. So. 
we'll, I and promise you that if we can do it, we construction will. will be done by then too, so we'll sure. have nice area back here oh, again, oh. hopefully. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, I tried, last, no, not last question, but third question. I tried to sign up for the flu shot clinic, but it was already filled up. Will we be getting more shots? The answer is yes. So they're coming in in waves, the flu shots. So as soon as we have the announcement that we have a shipment in, we're going to put them up on Care Merge, and then you go ahead and schedule through the clinic. So just be watching for that. Also on 1390, you'll see a slide come up on it. But yes, more are coming. Okay, last question. This one's a little bit longer, so bear with me on this. I have a medical condition that puts me at more risk of being, being seriously ill or worse if I contract the COVID virus. Can you share with the community that several people are in this same situation and to please understand that me and others are not trying to be antisocial, but rather protecting our health? I am worried that I'm offending people when I turn them down for dinner res reservations, but I'm truly just doing this to protect my life. So I really thought that was a good statement, you know, kind of question of, you know, nobody should ever feel bad for turning someone down for a reservation. Uh, we get that. We have, we have a lot of folks here that are going to be more susceptible um, to germs, viruses, yeah. just because of certain health conditions. So yeah. I thought that was a, a good thing to bring up that I, I know, I mean, nobody here is going to judge you for saying, I, I don't feel comfortable having dinner with you or lunch with you. That's going to happen now. I think everybody's more aware of their own personal health as well. And it's definitely personal decisions. Um, it's okay to even ask your friend or know where, where your friend has been. And if you don't feel that that fits in with your lifestyle or you're not comfortable with that, it's okay to share that. I think, I think, I would hope that we're all open at this point to feel comfortable talking to each other about what we're okay with. Yeah. Um, you know, we've had a year and a half, over a year and a half now of yeah, kind of dealing with all this well. and it, but it's still a struggle and I, I get that. Just, we don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable, you know, talking to each other about, about their concerns. Yeah, you know, it's like you said, it's been a year and a half. I mean, I, I know I speak for everybody when I say we are tired of COVID. I mean, I just wish it would go away. You know, who wants to be wearing these things anymore? Right. I mean, I sure don't, I can tell you. Yeah. Um, you know, every time I play pickleball in there and I'm sweating and I know, this thing gets all dying. sweaty and everything, it is, <laughs> yeah. it is not fun to be yeah. wearing these stupid masks, yeah. right? But we have but to. But we have to. We, and, we do what we need to, to protect and ourselves and each other. And some residents... Um, Vaccinated or unvaccinated, right. just have medical conditions that right. they feel like they need to be a little bit more protective sure. of themselves when they're out in the general public Absolutely. area. So um, again, we're just asking you not to judge them yeah. for that Absolutely. And, and try and understand yep. their situation. Yep. So. And you know, I, for the most part, we've been very fortunate. You know, you, you all remember this when first time COVID hit, we really shut the community down. We did. I mean, we did. you know, residents weren't able to eat with each other. I mean, you couldn't eat. Right. I mean, you know, we have a resident couple that's here. Well, they could eat right. together, but that was it. Right. They couldn't have any right. guests with them. They couldn't have any up. other residents eating with them. Right. And in our single residents, they had to just eat by themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that was very yeah. demonstrative and yeah. kind of depressing. Yeah. And, you know, we're not like that now. You know, right. we're, right. we've been, the vaccinations have helped us be able to be a little bit more sure. open to communal dining, mm -hmm. and so we've been able to, to be able to be a little bit more loosey-goosey about that this right, time. Right. Um, and, you know, so far, it's worked out to our benefit. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. know we really, we haven't seen a big, we haven't seen any real cases on the independent living side. Right, right. Um, so, yeah. so, you know, and I think part of that, again, goes back to our bubble. You know, we, we are in a bubble here, you know, with 98% of our mm -hmm. residents, and now we, the great news about 81% of our staff. Right. You know, we got a lot of folks that are vaccinated, and you know, just because you're vaccinated doesn't mean you can't get it. But mm -hmm. I, I do think, again, you know, um, if it keep the vaccination keeps you out of the hospital, keeps you from dying, that's what we want. So, right. Right. Absolutely. Um, and yep. that's that's what it appears that is that's happening right. out there. That's what I see when I look at the yep. information. Anyway. And so. still following the three W's, the mask, yeah. social distancing, washing your hands, all of that are tools that we have to try to protect ourselves. That's right. So that's right. Absolutely. So thank you for that comment. Okay. We are down to the trivia. Dun, dun, dun. And I 
And this was a hard one today. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the leader of the club that's made for you and me? <laughs> M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E. -E. Okay, so the question was, who is the leader of the club that's made for you and me? I think I just told him. The <laughs> answer they can't is. Spell. Do you want to sing it again, Tom? M I C K E Y M O U S E. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. <laughs> oh. How many phone calls did you get, Michelle? I'm not really sure. <laughs> she lost track. Oh, so oh, the first funny. caller had to call back again and got back in. I the, love it. As our fourth caller in one. Okay. So people called multiple times. Okay. So the winner is Mary Kay Gobris. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. And thank you, Mr. Witt, for providing that wonderful question. And I still have a few more of his great questions. Yeah. So the only thing we'll you might not like those. about this question is they had to have, hear me sing it on the air. So well, I, that's true. Yeah, there is a detriment to, to that question. <laughs> um, so. I don't think any of the other questions require will me to require a song. So sure. I think we're that, good. That would I think be we're great good. if that was the case. Yep. So. <laughs> so Lisa, let's talk a couple seconds before we finish. So October is going to be a funky month as far it as is. our shows, right? Yes. Yes. We're not doing them on Wednesdays because of various reasons. One right. is because the Olympics, Olympics is going on, right? Yep. Another is because yep. I'm actually out of town one time. And right. so there's another right. one that's um, that we're out of town mm -hmm. um, at a conference together. So we're, mm -hmm. we're kind of back and forth all over the place a little bit, right? Yeah. So the next one that we have is Friday, October 8th. Yep. And so that's next week. That's next week. That's at the end week. of the week. Yep. That's right. And then we'll miss the next week, but then we're back again on Friday, October 22nd, which is a big meeting. Yeah, that's going to be when we talk about the budget and, right, and the right. increases. So my annual meeting. Things, so, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, and then... And, we're, and I think that's, you know, that's going to be part of the show. We're going to just do that as part right, of the show. Right, right. And we'll be broadcasting. Yeah, yes, we'll mm -hmm. be broadcasting. And we'll have, I'll have a PowerPoint for yep. that as well. But, yep. you know... Uh, being, we, you and I talked about mm -hmm. this, being the fact that we are kind of out in front of residents and we're sharing so much information right. here as part of the program, this meeting, other than talking about where we are financially, right. where we are from a marketing standpoint, sure. and then, you know, our budget and what the increase is going to be. That'll be the big part of that, That's the right? big part of that. Yeah. I mean, that's, we can kind of really fo narrow in and focus on that part of it. So it won't take up the entire right. time right. Um, to be able to talk about that. So. And then we also have one the last week of October on Thursday the 28th. Okay. So that's after we get back from the conference. Okay. We'll have another update then. So I think we're going to have a special yeah. guest or two coming in. We are. Right? We are. Yep. So um, I think we're going to have our gonna work with, employee appreciation yep. um, resident that handles yep. that. Lois is going to come mm -hmm. in and talk to uh, Everybody. Yep, because that'll be starting soon. That's probably going to be next week. I'm hoping. We haven't, we haven't talked to her. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> Call me, Lois. <laughs> and then I think at some point we want to bring um, our new HR director uh, on board for people to meet her and yep. probably our recruitment and specialist. Hopefully Andy might, at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might bring both of them That'd on. That'd be great. And kind of do yep. that. It might, that might be towards the end of the month. We'll do that mm -hmm. one. So, yeah. So... It's hard to believe, y'all. We're we're almost at the end of September. Yes. Woo. I mean, you know, October first is Friday. I mean, we're just two days away. So yeah, it's crazy. Fall's coming. I hope y'all enjoying the Ooh. weather. I know I am. It's <laughs> awesome. It's been beautiful outside. So we could use a little bit of rain. But other than that, mm -hmm. okay, Lisa. I think it's okay. time for us to say goodbye say for another goodbye. show. Our hundred and thirtieth. Okay, hundred and thirtieth show. So we hope you all enjoy the weather. Have a great time out there. Be safe. Be careful. We love you. We'll see you.